update on the liver transplantation in severe acute cervix, severe alcoholic hepatitis. We have two distinguished uh, speakers. One is Dr. Arvind Swain. I mean, both the people do not require any introduction. Without having any introductions or anything, Dr. Swain is going to talk about that we should do the LT, early LT in severe alcoholic hepatitis, whereas Dr. <coughs> Pamecha from ILBS is going to say that we should not do it. Let's hear from them. Over to you, Dr. Swain, please. Share your slides and then you can kick off, please. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rao. Good evening, all. I will just share my slides. Just give me a second. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we, we can see that. Yeah, we can see. Right, so <clears throat> I will try and explain to you why early liver transplantation is indicated for selected patients with severe acute alcoholic hepatitis. Now, the three questions to ask and answer are one, why can't we do it? Or why should we not do it? The second question is, whom is it indicated in? And the third question is, are the outcomes similar to non-alcoholic hepatitis patients. Now, majority of the people will deny alcoholic hepatitis patients liver transplantation because they're worried that with short abstinence, there will be an increased risk of alcoholic relapse. They're also worried that the outcomes might be poor. Minor reasons are, of course, uh, there is a likelihood of recovery on medical therapy and there is a potential negative effect of transplant of alcoholic hepatitis on donation of diseased liver grafts. And there is this notion of personal responsibility for alcoholism and therefore justice and equity might suffer if you give them cannibal grafts. But of course, if you think of live donor uh, liver transplantation, the, the last point is not so valid. Now, we all have lived by the six month rule of alcohol abstinence and between uh, mid 80s when this rule came into being about 35 years ago and until the late 90s this was really uh, stuck on to by everyone all across the world but then <clears throat> as long back as 15 years ago people started questioning it people said that uh, especially in this French uh, consensus conference that was held in 2005 they said that six month period is not sufficiently evidence-based there are other factors involved in alcohol relapse. And as recently as last year, there was a consensus conference on liver transplantation for alcoholic hepatitis in the US, where the recommendation was that a fixed period of alcohol abstinence is not required. And it, there have been scores of uh, papers which say that six month period on its own does not prognosticate alcohol relapse uh, sufficiently for us to all stick by it. Now, what does then tell us the story of the future? People have tried to look at factors that might predict alcohol relapse <clears throat> and tried to do scoring systems. Uh, at Hopkins, they've done a score which uh, relates to some protective characteristics like self-admission to hospital, uh, low level of drinks per day before abstinence, having insight into diagnosis, having a stable marital status and abstinence prior to liver transplant. And then at-risk characteristics like psychiatric comorbidity, history of substance abuse, failed rehabilitation attempt, family history of alcohol, uh, unemployment, and so on. And there's another score called the uh, SALT score, which is a sustained use of alcohol after liver transplantation. Again, that depends on history of non-THC uh, illicit, uh, non illicit substance abuse, prior alcohol-related legal issues, and the number of drinks per day and failed alcohol rehabilitation. So both these scores and a couple of other scores are actually pretty good with negative prediction in the sense that if all these characteristics, the bad ones are absent, then you can say that relapse is less likely. But if they are present and if the scores are high, that does not predict relapse uh, reliably. So the positive predictive value is low. Uh, 
who are the candidates for liver transplantation in this scenario well this whole story started in 2011 when there was this uh, seminal paper by philippe mathurin from france where they thought that people who had this first episode of uh, liver decompensation because of alcohol without any known chronic liver disease they if they had not responded to medical therapy and if they had high uh lily scores then they had a survival of less than 30% at 6 months so they took up 26 of these patients across seven centers six in france and one in belgium and these people with first episode of uh, alcoholic hepatitis if they didn't respond to medical therapy which was given at a madri score of 32 or more and especially if they had then a lily score of more, more than 0.45 they were put through Uh, an emergency or a semi-urgent transplant without sticking to the six-month or the three-month rule. In fact, without paying any attention to the abstinence part. And basically, they showed that there was 77% two-year survival among 26 patients who had transplants for acute alcoholic hepatitis, and just 23% among another 26. matched controls who did not have liver transplantation who were managed with medical treatment so and the, the recidivism among patients who were transplanted was about 11.5% just three patients had alcohol relapse so this was the paper that had had all the heads turning back to looking at whether these patients should have transplantation now what do we do at medanta let's show you some data from our hospital among the uh, 3000 odd adult liver transplantation uh, done so far uh, about just over a fourth of our patients have alcoholic liver disease um and we have this abstinence protocol right from the beginning of our program uh if we have patients with end stage liver disease due to alcohol whether it is progressive or stable with history of decompensation we do insist on an abstinence of 3 months or more but if we have patients with severe acute alcoholic hepatitis with a high mel and a madri score of more than 32 we do consider them for either medical treatment with uh, steroids if suitable or liver transplantation in selected patients independent of the abstinence period so our protocol for liver transplantation for sah is first episode of liver decompensation due to alcohol jaundice with high uh, sgot no known chronic liver disease Uh, uh and failure of of medical therapy commitment to abstain permanently positive psychosocial assessment by psychiatrists and the medical teams and hepatologists and the surgeons and good family support uh absence of major comorbidity and absence of a site absence of sepsis i mean treated sepsis is okay but florid sepsis which is untreated is not So we have actually published our experience with 39 patients who had liver transplantation for alcoholic hepatitis and we had 39 among a total of 500 among a total of 1700 and 6 liver transplants uh, living donor liver transplants done in the 7 year period from 2010 to 17 all these patients had right lobe grafts with good GRWR and there was no definite abstinence period considered So this is another representation of the uh, patient cohort a total of 1700 500 ALDs out of which 101 we thought preoperatively had clinical alcoholic hepatitis but only 39 of them proved to be so on histology of the explant so on the explant histology we considered all these uh, features to actually diagnose them as having alcoholic hepatitis Uh, steatosis focal ballooning neutrophil infiltration hyaline bodies and pericellular fibrosis now looking at the preoperative characteristics of patients with uh, sah we uh, uh, obviously uh, they were a younger lot they had high mel than child scores uh, and they had a, a, a madri score of more than 50 at uh, of 53 38 to 73 comparing this cohort of 39 patients with alcoholic cirrhosis in 461 patients uh, 
again, the alcoholic hepatitis patients were younger, uh, the child and bell scores were higher, and post-transplant, they had a higher incidence of infections compared to alcoholic cirrhosis. Now let's look at abstinence and relapse. Uh, three fourths of our patients had less than six months abstinence. About a third of them had less than three months abstinence. And uh, we had five relapses. That's just under 13%. Um, there was just an occasional uh, uh, slip or relapse in one and significant relapse in four out of these five patients. And the relapse was not actually related to the abstinence in any way. This incidence of relapse was very similar to our other publications where we found an incidence of around 10% relapse in these patients. Um, and in this group of 39, we had a survival of 85% at 24 months. We lost five patients. Uh, six patients, three early and three late. And again, uh, the mortality had nothing to do with the abstinence. There was no correlation. And compared to alcoholic cirrhosis, the alcoholic hepatitis patients had very similar survival. Uh, the others have actually found the same thing, that they have excellent survivals between 70 and 90 percent, and uh, the lapse rates of around 3 to 23 percent. And a recent series, I mean, these are all single center series. This is, of course, not, but these two are single center series. And this is a um, uh, 12 center US series, which had 147 patients, where they found one in three year survival of 94 and 84%. Relapse of 34%, that means any alcohol and harmful amounts of alcohol, and 11%. And in this LDLT series, living donor liver transplant series, Again, in about 100 odd patients from Korea, they found that less than three months and more than three months had similar uh, uh, relapse rate. And there was no uh, relation to the abstinence period. So how many centers actually do this? I actually posted this question on the Liver Transplant uh, Society of India members group, and nobody said no. I've had like about 25 yeses that yes, we would do it in selected patients. Uh, a couple of years ago in France, there was a survey and nearly everyone would do it. And in the US, there was a similar survey where 28% centers had actually done it, 50% were open to doing it, and 81% were neutral. So, so there is a huge conversion happening across the globe, and these patients are being accepted for transplantation. So to conclude, those with SAIDs that do not respond to or are unfit for medical treatment, especially with high LILI scores, have a less than 30% chance of making it to six months. So these patients must be considered for early liver transplantation. Of course, there have to be a strict selection criteria. And relapse rates are 10 to 34% with around 8 to 15% harmful drinking, which is the same as with the six-month rule. An improvement of candidate selection to predict alcohol relapse after transplant is definitely needed uh, because we don't know which patients will actually relapse. And uh, so, quite clearly, living donor liver transplantation for alcoholic hepatitis can be performed in selected patients with good outcomes and acceptable relapse rates. Majority would do it even with uh, deceased donors, but obviously in terms of competition among different types of recipients, these recipients may not receive priority. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ravinder, for, for an excellent talk and then convincing us that uh, early liver transplantation. Now let's hear from Dr. Miriander Omecha from Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences about why it uh, early transplant is may not be helpful or not to be done. Dr. Pamecha, please. Over.